Hey, great to have your company right here on DXB today. Uh, we are discussing all things content creation. More specifically, uh, how do you monetize your digital content as well? Is it something that comes naturally to you? Are there certain talents that you can employ? Uh, well, to that end, we've put together a couple of very special guests, including uh, our next guest, employee or corporate employee turned content creator who offers quality content now to influencers uh, through the company that he has created, Last Minute Productions. Please welcome Croydon Fernandez to the show. Croydon, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tom. I'm going to pick up on a point that Carl just made a minute ago as well, because because sure. it strikes me that this is probably something that you've been through. It's really interesting him saying that, you know, a lot of people have got nine to five. They've got jobs mm -hmm. and they do content creation as a bit of a side hustle. When do you know the time is right to jump and take a little bit of a leap of faith and rely on the content to be your salary? That's a good question, actually. I mean, for me, it was sort of a calculated risk because I had a very comfortable job. I used to work in the government. And um, yeah, taking that jump from saying, I'm done with the nine to five and want to do this as a full time, uh, full time uh, yeah. situation. It just happened. It was just one of those days. I was just like, you know what? I'm downing the tools now. Was it, was it a question of just not enough time in the day for you as well? I mean, yeah, it, it, it is that. I mean, as, as the project started getting more complicated, as there was more work coming in from the side hustle, and there was a lot more, lot more of my work involved into that, um, I, re I realized I need to put in more work and more effort into the, the side business and make it my main business. Mm -hmm. That's when I decided to, to take the leap of faith. And what platform did you start on? And what's your, what became your preferred one later down the line? I started on Instagram. Mm. So, um, at least the main focus was Instagram initially. Uh, but if we go way back, it was Facebook. That's what I started on. And uh, from Facebook, obviously, once Instagram started making the waves, a lot of amazing content creation started coming on there. I decided to get onto that platform, use that to sort of showcase my creati creativity. And agencies like FAM sort of noticed me and reached out to me to help me build my brand, build my data, and get uh, in touch with other agencies as well, other big corporations. And Corinne, when you got into uh, the content creation side of things, were you really focused on, um, I'm gonna make a lot of money out of this? Or what, what was your perspective? <laughs> Actually, no, I never thought of making money. That, that was, a, the, that's the main thing. I had always seen it as a place to express creativity mm. through different forms. So for me, it started off in photography, but then I slowly sort of learned how to do videography, how to sort of edit, cut, do entire workflows into animation as well. Mm. And yeah, so as I, as I sort of learned more and created more, brands sort of wanted to work with me with, within that sort of a scope. And that's when the money started coming. But I never really started to do it for money. Mm. But I love that though, because clearly your passion has then led him to just be so good at his content creation and therefore brands would, would come to him. That, that makes perfect sense. Before you came on the show, Corinne, I was asking Carl about the challenges that content cre creators face. You must have faced a few challenges in your time, be it when you were in a full-time job or mm -hmm. since then. Can you share any of those? Um, thinking, I, I guess it was the initial reach for uh, as a content creator. You, I mean, I didn't really want to be noticed as such. I'm, I'm a very shy person, mm. if, in that, if, if that makes sense. But Welcome to live TV. No, <laughs> I know. On Dubai One. <laughs> it's fine. No one's watching. <laughs> no, I know. It's but uh, friends, it's good. <laughs> It was, it was platforms like Carl's that sort of really pushed me into to changing that, that sort of introvertedness, that sort of face of myself, and uh, really sort of helping me it, overcome those sort of challenges. Is there a challenge, the other challenge I sort of notice as well, I don't know if this, this, is, this is current or not, is it seems that because the technology and because the trends are evolving so quickly, and the platforms <laughs> as well, you know, TikTok's hot one day, Instagram's back in, in, in business the next day, right. uh, X has now come back on board. Well, you know, you're trying to stay on top of, of, of A, what's hot, what's not, at the same time where the tech is going mm -hmm. and what people therefore want. So how do you work out the sort of wheat from the chaff and oh, what is going to, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's one of those where you just, you just, you just go with the flow. You I stick to what you know, yeah? Yeah, I mean, at least I, I try to stick to what I know. I, I understand that in today's world, it, it's ever changing and a lot of different things are happening, at least in, in terms of what people want to see. It used to be aesthetic content yeah. initially. Now it's just casual stuff like 
like Katie's cats, for example. That's right. That I really, I'm so glad my cats are getting the showcase they deserve <laughs> today. I mean, people want to see stuff like that now. It, back when I started, it was the very aesthetic. Everything needs to look really pretty and so on and so forth. But now that, that kind of doesn't work. So I've been having to find myself filming more of the casual stuff, which I think is, it's, in a way, it's nice. So you, you sort of improve your own skill set and yeah. We've literally run out of time on this occasion, about 30 seconds, but um, to all those people that aren't watching, so it's fine, you know, you're outside the shell, etc. Yeah. Uh, piece of advice to those looking to, to make waves in the content creation field at the moment. Make waves. I would say just don't stop learning. Uh, it's, there's never a, a stop button in, in content creation. I mean, I started in photography, but ended up learning animation, mm. uh, video, video editing, videography, to directing, and literally creating a whole company, a lot of creating a, a media production company here in, in the UAE. So yeah, just don't stop learning. Absolutely. Oh, we love it. Croydon, thank you so much. It's Last Minute Productions. Awesome. That's your company. Yeah, so if you it. need help getting into the space, make sure you find Croydon. Thank you so much for thank taking us and joining us thank on you. today. But now we are going to move over to today's spotlight. And that is on a beauty discovery platform that aims to disrupt how beauty is being shopped online by creating a unified and streamlined shopping experience for everyone. This is Nidhi Sharma from Noor Beauty. Hi, I'm Nidhi. I'm the founder of Noor. Noor is a beauty editorial e-tail platform that aims to disrupt the way beauty is being browsed and shopped online. Right now, the purchase journey is insanely long. You discover a product on TikTok or Instagram, then you go to YouTube, you watch a tutorial, you go to Pinterest, seek inspiration, and then you sort of say, okay, I want this product, and you go find a place to buy it. Studies show that 80% of the people don't make that journey, they drop out somewhere in the middle. What we're trying to do is make sure that we give our audience relevant products in the first place and they're more likely to buy them. I think in terms of Noor, just seeing the whole app come alive, that's been a major milestone for me. From literally being the vision in my head to app screens, to you know drawing it on Figma, to seeing a beta version, to now seeing it in the you know, in the palm of many, many different women, seeing their eyes light up. I think that for me is a major milestone. Just to get from where we started to where we are, to actually see it come to life, that's definitely a major milestone. The long-term goal for us would be to, that, to be that one beauty platform for every discerning beauty user to come in and shop. We want people to you know, come and browse beauty and not just sort of have a very search and transactional relationship with it. We'd like people to have a very heartfelt relationship with beauty shopping, which is how it's always meant to be. We want to be known as that one destination in the UAE and inshallah in the GCC uh, that is known for their best in class editorials, for their curated brands, for their, um, for their fantastic browsing experience. It offers you the best of everything, right, across all industries. I totally feel it's the next world uh, capital. Dubai, I think more than anything, I feel takes its beauty extremely seriously, right? It, it takes, it understands that it's not only about an appearance, but it also goes beyond that to understand, you know, the best skincare, investing in the right treatments, investing in the right uh, tools, investing in the right sort of uh, programs. So I feel it's, it's as a city, it's always ready for better. It's always ready for more. It's always ready for the best kind of stuff. And that's what makes it really exciting. Nidhi from Noor Beauty there, giving us a little insight. Right, let's get over to the news. It's time for a roundup with Meva. Well, Tom, Million, the new app in content monetization launched in the MENA, is all set to change the digital content creation landscape. It enables content creators to directly monetize their work through pay-per-view, subscriptions, gifts, and digital collectibles, ensuring they are fairly compensated for their efforts and creativity, while also fostering direct engagement with their communities. The app capitalizes on the explosive growth of the creator economy, currently valued at $100 billion, and projected to soar to an outstanding $480 billion by 2027. What I'm do sorry. you think? Four, 
480 billion dollars. Yes. <laughs> Let's just, can we let that sink in? I mean, what on earth, Carl, what do you think of that? It, it's absolutely amazing to see this projection is just, the growth is just exceptional. So it's very exciting. It's very, it is very exciting. exciting. I'm, I, I, I don't know much about this platform, I must say, in terms of million. It does sound similar to perhaps others that are in the market and in the region, so I mean, well, I read the line enables content creators directly monetize their work. What would what do Vamp think about that? Yes, yeah, exactly. No, no, that, that's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, this is that's a separate space, right? These guys, we we connect them with brands, but you know, if you think about musicians and artists and all these guys that create, you know, beautiful art, they have this opportunity now to monetize that. So it's it's fantastic. So question to you on that one about the region, and it's a MENA region app, isn't it? Yes. Um, we've, we, the, the, we, we were talking about that. Um, we often use that word hub, don't we? You know, Dubai is a bit of a hub, the UAE is a bit of a hub for aviation, for industry, for that. Is it becoming a hub for, 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 for tech startups like this, for, 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 for content creation? Are we seeing more creators come here? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, there is so much um, uh, experience and um, there's some great artists that are coming through to, to the Middle East and particularly through the UAE. Um, so it's, it's just, yeah, there's, I know that they've obviously targeted because there's been a, the additions to the, free, the freelance visas and the golden visas yep. as well, where yep. talent creators and talent creators can now apply for places here. So there's obviously that drive from government and otherwise to bring more of the talent to the future here. Absolutely. Mm. Going back to the whole monetization side of things, because there's there is a lot of content creators that are moving to the whole paywall side mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I subscribe to a lot of Patreon uh, podcasts. Yep. I listen to a lot of podcasts, and I actually pay to listen to additional content. Some of it is probably probably like three or four minutes of waffle on a podcast each week, but I'm happy to pay because I enjoy the content. Is that going to be more and more a paywall thing? I think so, yeah. And it, and it gives the um, lesser known artists this opportunity to mon monetize their craft. So it's, it's, it's exciting with all these, this new technology that's coming out and these new apps and platforms for, for creative people. It's, yeah, it's great. I love it. But I also know that a lot of content creators are being hired by the government to kind of share new, certain news in English and Arabic and law and all of that. And their whole brand is specific to that niche because not only does it foster their more their field that they've studied in and working in, but also kind of contribute to the news, spreading the news and kind mm -hmm. of um, engaging with the community. So are we seeing more of these type of contents being monetized as well yeah. on social? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of the creators for that reason is because they're so relatable, right? So you know, um, they they create beautiful content, but it's very, very authentic. So you know, that's why it's very highly engaging. It isn't these huge productions that you see? It's mm. um, you know, yeah, that raw raw content. I think the beauty of it as well, especially in a unique city, take for Dubai for example, where what are we? One hundred and just over 200 nationalities or something like that. Everyone talks about the melting pot of cultures and nationalities that all live within the city. How on earth does one agency, one company get one message to, uh, to the majority of those people? It's nigh on impossible unless you're doing, you know, days where when you do press releases in 15 yeah. different languages, etc. And yet clever content can reach out and cross all those borders immediately, can't it? Absolutely. It is so, it is so, so clever. And authenticity is key. That's all we hear now, isn't it? That's it. Authenticity yeah. is key. Um, stick around. We're not going to let you go just yet. We're going <laughs> to chat about this a little more. However, next up, we are going to be meeting the co-founder of a leading UAE-based creator monetization platform, much like the one we've just spoken about. But we are going to be speaking to Lively, plus an incredible musical performance to round off the show. We'll see you very soon.